Hello, Jason Dragon here from Emerald Computers. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Ethereum mining software. It's very important to keep your mining software up to date. Every time they come out with a new version, it usually is slightly faster for everybody. And for select people, it's a lot faster. Sometimes on a particular version, they might spend all their time and energy making it faster for a particular line of AMD video cards. Next time, it might be NVIDIA video cards. Um, other times, they fix bug fixes or stability issues. So most of the computers that we've built and with mining uh, for mining were shipped out in 2017. And during 2017, the best one out there was Claymore 9. Um, I think most of our computers shipped out of Claymore 9.7. And Claymore 9.7 was a pretty good piece of software. But since then, there's been some better ones that have been created. First off, Claymore 9.7 um, had a dev fee of 3%. So 3% of the time, Claymore 9.7 was mining for the developers who created the software, who have become quite wealthy off of all of this software and, and likely they should have because they made some good software and I have no problem with people earning money off of what the, off their intelligence. Um, that's how I earn my money too. So next some other people made another mining software called Phoenix and with Phoenix it was a lot more stable because of just the way it, how it handled memory, how it handled the DAG file and how it communicated with the server. So on Claymore 9 series and even Claymore 10 series you would have you know errors and shares that were too slow or too old and um, uncles and all that. Well not uncles, that, that's caused by something else. But it needless to say it caused issues. So with the Phoenix Miner in general you saw about a 1 to 2 percent gain at the time. Now, a lot of those improvements have been put back into the Claymore software, and now the newer versions of Claymore 11 um, have all of that in there. Now, the, one of the reasons I'm really talking about this now is because for most of my clients, they simply didn't have the technical computer skill to update the software themselves. So that's what I'm going to be showing you in this video along with differences of the different types of software. So first off, you need to get your hands on the software. And as you can see down here, uh, right below me, let's see, right here, it says um, where to go to get the software. Now, emeraldcomputers.com slash pub slash ETH miners dot zip. Now, you're going to download that particular file. And when you open that file, what are you going to see in it? You're going to see these three folders. And what I have is I have one version of Claymore, the newest one, version 11.9. I have the Phoenix Miner 2.8C and the Phoenix Miner 3.0C. Um, you don't really need the older Phoenix Miner. That's mostly just there um, as a reference. I haven't really tested out 3.0C extensively, so I decided to put that in there. Now, what is the difference in mining speed on my computer? Now, let me tell you what I have. I have a 1070 Ti video card on this particular computer. It's just this is my computer I make my videos with and while I'm not making videos I let it mine. I'm actually making it mine right now while I'm making this video which is why at least on my feedback on my end it doesn't seem very smooth. So let me open this up real quick. Now, I did go through and benchmark the different levels, and I let them mine for about 15 minutes each. And Claymore 11.9 was getting 28.603 mega hash. Uh, the Phoenix Miner 2.8C, which is a much older than 11.9, was getting 28.567, while the Phoenix Miner 3.0C, which just recently came out, actually came out a few months ago, gets 29.370 when I was doing the benchmark. Now, each one, when you run it for the first time, you're going to see over here, it's going to pop up a Windows Defender firewall has blocked some of the features of this app. Now, if you just click Allow Access, if you ever see this, and you are running a program that you trust, make sure you hit Allow Access. If you do not trust that program, or it's 
some program that you've never seen, do not hit allow access. But because I'm the one that downloaded these and I know that they're good, I was able to do that. So if you see right here, I'm not getting the mega hash that I'm supposed to be getting. I'm only getting, let's see, the average speed over the last five minutes, 28.512 which is a little bit less than it's supposed to be getting. Now the reason it's less is because I'm using a pretty substantial substantial amount of GPU power to record this video and they're fighting with each other and you won't see that in a regular mining machine so I am going to close the mining software right now and hopefully this is going to make the video much more smooth. So now you see my hand wave it should be much more smooth than it was earlier. I don't know if it's just rendering on my screen so jerky or now it's rendering perfect. So I don't know if the video up till now was jerky or or just my replay of my live video shot. But hopefully it's just the live replay and you have you're watching me fine. So I'm going to turn on my light here. So when you open the zip file, you're going to see these various versions of ethermod. Now as, you sh as I showed you by earlier in this video, when I run the, you saw how jerky it everything was and how it was actually slowing down my computer. Ah, interesting. So earlier Claymore 11 was working fine and now it's giving a libcurl DLL file. So that is most likely due to a fact that some antivirus thought something in there was a virus. It's um, very important that you put your mining software, um, usually I do it, let me put it back here, I, I put my mining software in a folder that will not be considered a virus because if you get, if they think it's a virus, it's not going to mine. Now, one of the things I like about the Claymore program is usually it's not as aggressive. So now we're going to run the Claymore program while I'm making this video. And you'll see we get a little bit less mega hash. But when it's running, here we go, we've got the little pop-up video for the firewall. Of course we did, just like every single time. So I'm going to hit allow access. So in my experience, the Claymore one is less intensive and it doesn't slow down everything. So in my playback now, it is getting slow again. I'm waving my hand to see the delay. And as you can tell, with the playback, we're getting 28.053 on this 1070 Ti video card. Um, if you're interested, this video card is from Zotac, and I have a very small overclock. Um, I'm not overclocking the GPU at all. I'm only overclocking the memory by a little bit. So as you can tell, at least I can tell from the playback, it's definitely a lot more jerky. So I am going to close that. So when I do record my videos, I do keep that closed. So why did this happen? Why did um, a lot of people were calling me because all of a sudden, a couple of weeks ago, their miner stopped? Well, you may or may not know, but how the Ethereum became ASIC resistant for the most part by creating something called a DAG file, which is this really complicated file which gets put in memory and that's how it mines based upon that DAG file. And the old Claymore software, well, when Ethereum was originally created, it was supposed to have a sunset period where mining was only supposed to happen for a specific amount of time. And at the end of that time, it was going to go to proof of stake. And nobody at the time, you know, two years ago, thought that it was going to continue mining past that. But they had a fork a while back which allowed another two years of mining before proof of stake. So we still have until about you know mid-2020 that we can mine and probably, well, if the price of Ethereum stays below a thousand, it won't be very profitable. But if the price of Ethereum goes back above a thousand, which I hope it does, at this point in time I'm, you know, it's, I'm not too optimistic about it as much as I used to be, but I really hope it does. So nobody thought that they were going to go beyond version 200 of the DAG. So they called it an epoch, like an age. And each epoch would last for a few days. And at the end of that epoch, it would generate the next epoch. And then you could you would have to mine continuously because that would make it a lot more difficult for all the ASIC miners. 
So what happened is the old versions of Claymore only had the programming built in to handle up to Epoch 200. And we're on Epoch 204 right now. So about two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, we hit Epoch 200 and everything started giving an error message. I think I can recreate that error message. Let's see, where can I... I have a copy of Claymore 10, and I believe it has the... It's too old, so let me bring it over here. Anyway, we've had a lot of issues, so right there. Pool sent wrong data. Can't, cannot send epoch disconnect. Connection loss. And it's going to retry in 20 seconds, but it keeps retrying. It'll never work because it cannot generate an epoch higher than 200. And it's impossible, so it's never going to work. So, you know, I've been using the Phoenix Miner. The Claymore Miner is very good if you use Claymore 11 point whatever. Of course, you want to probably use 11.9. So when you download one of these, the way I've set up all the minor machines that we've sold, we use the config file. Because if you use the batch file, uh, things can it's a one big long command line, and the config file allows you to do a lot better. So in our config file, we can put the name of the mining machine right here, so that we can replace that with whatever we want to call it, Epsilon, E-P-S-I-L-O-N. So that's the name of the computer I'm on. You put your mining address. You can put um, ePool. So your, my, your Ethereum pool, we're using us one to ethermineorg um, You have to put colon 4444, all that. You don't need to worry about this because this file hasn't changed. So all you have to do is copy the version that you have in your old file. So let's say, for example, you have Claymore 10 and it was working, or Claymore 9, or whatever version you have. Let me go hit back a couple times here. And, hmm. Okay, let me just open it back in the other folder. So on Claymore 10, you have your config.txt file. So what you want to do is you want to copy that file, right click and hit copy. You can also hit, um, you know, control C or you can just drag and drop, which is usually my preference. And then you're going to download the new version of Claymore or um, Phoenix Miner, whatever you need to do right there. Okay. Unfortunately, I just minimized everything because I shook it to get your attention. <laughs> the beauty of Windows 10. Anyway. So, you can download your Claymore 10 right there. And you want to copy the config file over the config file that you have in there. And that will copy all of your configuration data into the new version. And that's it. Now, on the computers we built, we also put everything in the, in the startup. So you're going to type, you're going to hit Windows R, brings up the run bar, which is down here in the beginning. Type shell colon startup. And what this does is it just opens up your startup folder. So these are the programs that launch on your computer on startup. I have a DNS program just gives me a static DNS, and then I have a shortcut to the software. So what you want to do is you want to delete that shortcut in here. You're going to open up the Phoenix Miner or the Claymore Miner that you've put on, on whatever folder you're going to be mining, and you're going to drag the executable down there. Now before you let go, you want to hold down Control and Shift at the same time. It's going to create a thing that says Create Link in Startup. You're going to let go. And that's it. Now, if you run that link, it's going to do that. We're going to hit Allow Access yet again. It keeps saying that, Allow Access. So now we're mining with Phoenix Miner right there. It's built on the startup, so when you reboot your machine, it will go right into that. And because all the machines we shipped automatically log the user in, it will also log in and instantly start mining, which is exactly what we want. So there we go. Now we're mining. And now we're not. <sighs> so if you have any questions, really get with us in writing on Facebook. That's the best way to do it. You want to like Emerald Computers on Facebook. You want to make sure that you follow us on Facebook. When we come out with new data and new um, information, we always put it straight away on, on our Facebook page. 
and I make these more lengthy videos on YouTube to explain how everything works to people because so many people want to be able to do that. Now, in case you're wondering, if you are interested in getting the Claymore Miner software directly from the website that I get my Claymore Miner software from, that would not be a bad thing. Let me go over here. So this is what happens if you search Google for Claymore Miner. And let me move it over so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, go. So you're going to see one here called BitcoinTalk.org. Now, Claymore and the people who release the Phoenix Miner make that their official location where they seem to announce their deliveries of their new baby. Um, on Claymore, you're going to see right here, and there will be a link, and it says Mega. So you're just going to click the one that says Mega.nz. It's going to load right here. Now, you can use the one that I've created, which is you know a zip file with all those different locations. I'll move that down. Here. I'll move that so you can actually see it. So right there, or you can just go to the actual source. Now, if a new version comes out, then you definitely want to be going to this mega site. And you can actually bookmark this location right here, and you'll be able to be able to go right in there. Now you want to go down to the very, very bottom, which is the zip archive. Here, we're going to make the, uh, well, the, the file name is really, really long. So you're just going to right click on it, click on download, standard download, boom. 20 seconds later, it's on your hard drive. You're done. Now, the same thing goes for if you type in Phoenix Miner. So, Phoenix Miner, Bitcoin Talk, 3.0C, and you're going to go down. They put theirs a little bit lower in the thing, so here is their, their link to Mega.nz. So, you're going to go right there, right click on the zip, download it. Same process. That gives you the updated version. Now, when you extract this, put it on your hard drive, wherever you're going to put it, make sure that you delete their config.txt file and copy your precious config.txt file onto there. Now, one of the things that I've done, which make it a lot easier to propagate the software to a lot of different places, is I've stored it on my server. So if you go to my public folder, ETH, and right here, you can see the different versions so I'm going to put this up here because I just downloaded this. So we have a lot of different software that I've done. So this allows me to go to any computer on my network and I just type in the name of my server and I go to this folder and I can grab that file, those, those files and put them on my local computer, set it all up and I don't need to mess with thumb drives or anything. If you don't want to set up a server and go through all that, um, you can just simply put the mining software on a thumb drive, copy it to the desktop. Now I will tell you as, as before, uh, a quick little thing, when you change the folder name right here, it is going to delete the exemption that most of the computers that I sent out were created. Now on my particular computer, I have an exemption from the antivirus for everything on my desktop. So if I put something on my desktop, that means I trust it and I can let it run and it's not going to have the virus scan it so if you have antivirus software on there on your computer you are going to want to go through and add an exemption so threat protection this is the Windows Defender one I don't actually use Windows Defender but I can go through and show it to you we go to exclusions and mine, I'm Jason, so mine is Jason slash desktop, which is the whole folder, and there's an exemption. And that means you're not going to see files get deleted, files get destroyed, because all of a sudden some DLL files determined to be in a virus by uh, Microsoft or by AVG or by Norton or McAfee. Um, though it's not really McAfee, it's a company he sold. Anyway, you can pick whatever software you use. If you use AVG, you can do that. Um, you know, quite a few different things. So anyway, hopefully that helps you out. Subscribe to my YouTube channel um, so that you get the updated videos when more information comes out about mining. I am working on a video right now that will be released very shortly about cryptocurrency pricing and mining profitability and doing a whole analysis of the statistics. Anyway, 
that should be coming out soon. So definitely like this channel and have an awesome day. Well, you have a good day, and thanks. Let's see if I covered everything before I hit stop. I think I did. So that should be it. Have an awesome day.